Seizure warning. This video contains flashing lights. Recently, I played through Dead Space 2 with the help of some friends to keep me from huffing markers and going insane. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. The game begins by immediately testing the epilepsy warning it put on the splash screens to make sure that anyone who struggles with flashing lights is either dead or really annoyed. Guess which one I am. We're forced to participate in therapy from a guy that I'm pretty sure isn't a licensed practitioner where he goes through a crash course about the events of the first game, but our dead girlfriend is anti-healthcare so she interrupts our session by climbing on the desk and demanding that we make her whole, which isn't as sexy of a come on as she thinks it is. Then we flash forward some time in the future where we're rescued by a guy who says that he'll tell us everything, so of course he immediately gets killed for dramatic timing. We try to escape but I immediately run the wrong way, which my livestream chat had guessed was going to happen because I'm a predictable idiot. After running the right way, we find out that there is toggle aim in this game, but I'm literally not allowed to assign it to the mouse 2 button. And also there's no toggle sprint, so I'm giving this game a 0 out of 10. We watch a YouTube video and meet back up with our therapist, who looks like he should probably go to some therapy himself, who lets us out and then tries to give himself a haircut, but this is exactly why you should go to a barber shop instead of doing it at home. And then we make it to elevator number 1. Oh boy, here we go. We meet Garth, who tells us that we've got brain damage because of the events of the first game, and we do the ritual elevator dance to the next floor and curl through a vent. Get it out now, there's a lot of this in this game, and I don't want to hear Sasamogus every time. We fall out of the ceiling like Ryan. <laughs> and borrow the gravity gun, I mean kinesis module, so we can pick things up and throw them at hospital patients. Hi, Editor Will here. I missed this elevator when I was writing the script, and of course I decided to number every single one of them. So now I have to go back and renumber every single one of them. After freeing more hospital patients from their medical bills, we meet up with a guy who's in the middle of surgery. So we try to get him out of it, but the doctor found out that his insurance declined. So he gets killed and we perform our own surgery on the doctor, free of charge. I am not a licensed medical professional, but then again, that never stopped Dr. Phil. We thank our brave medical workers the same way the government does and get our slow down button, which I will repeatedly forget to use throughout the course of the game. We take elevator number three and do the ritual dance where we meet up with our dead girlfriend who once again tries to seduce us by screaming at us, which is like the opposite of sexy. I've already got tinnitus, I don't need any more, thanks. A window breaks and all the air tries to escape, but we need that to breathe, so we hold the air hostage and I make an observation. Save station. Now I can't remember, do they have a jump scare before one of the save stations in this game? Because I feel like they did. They've got to. You like get to a, a save station and then something like jumps out and attacks you. Oh, hey, speak of the devil. <laughs> and now we get to the first shop, which contains all the DLC from this game for free. So it's time to load up on overpowered gear and a suit that looks pretty much how you'd expect a suit should look if you spend several days shooting zombies in close quarters. We go through a boss fight, which is just a regular fight with a slightly larger enemy with more health and crawl through another vent to some apartments where we murder the tenants for not paying their rent on time. I don't care if rent went up a thousand percent. You pay it on time or you get evicted from your life. We take elevator number four and do the ritual dance before clearing the hallways with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Editor Will here again. Here's another elevator I missed. I really hope I didn't miss any more elevators. And then meet up with our dead wife again, who once again screams at us through her Xbox 360 microphone. After skipping the queue to get aboard a train, because Isaac really loves trains, we shoot the rest of the people on the train as they try desperately to stop our crazed murder spree. That's right, I've waited the appropriate amount of time to make this joke again so it's considered a callback and not just me being lazy by reusing the same joke again for the fourth time. We jump across a gap to the rest of the train and spam E to not die, where we slide out of the front of the train to recreate that scene from The Last of Us. Wait, zombie game, hanging upside down, woman named Ellie. Is The Last of Us just a ripoff of Dead Space 2? Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, we almost got crushed by the train because we didn't pay for a ticket and then get attacked by a bunch of kids coming from a candy shop. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know what came over me. We take elevator number six, do the ritual dance, and witness literally 1984 before hacking our way into elevator number seven so we can do the ritual dance again. Damage to glass? What glass? Oh, that glass. <laughs> After punching some children, because let's be honest, what child do you know that doesn't deserve to be punched? We crawl through a vent and turn off a garbage disposal so we can stick our head into it. And then we get a little lost trying to plug a battery in so we can take elevator number eight, where we do the ritual dance and fry some popcorn chicken, where I argue with Tally about what temperature to cook meat. I like my necromorph well done. Nobody likes their thing well done. That's a lie. My I'll necromorph like I like please. well done. You will get your necromorph done medium and you will like it. 
Fuck you. Well done, Necromorph, please. We meet up with our dead wife again, and Isaac tells her that she's not real, which is true, but also don't talk to the hallucination of your dead wife, Isaac. We take elevator number nine and do the ritual dance and take a shortcut through a church where pastors try to baptize us, but we're a good Christian boy, so we politely decline. We take our first lift, which I'm counting separately to an elevator, and crawl through a vent and our dead wife tries to vaccinate us. But Isaac is an anti-vaxxer because he spends too much time on Facebook and believes the word of Karen the neighborhood bitch over an actual accredited doctor, which is why he's hallucinating his dead wife trying to give him a vaccination. The moral of this story is that you should get vaccinated or like move out into the woods where you never interact with other humans so you don't get people sick with a preventable disease. We take lift number two and get stuck in a room with some introverts, so we murder them for being too shy to introduce themselves, and then take lift number three to elevator number ten, where we do the ritual dance and go through some Disney archives where we kill all the Walt Disney clones. We take lift number four and deactivate Baby's first Dyson Sphere so we can stop believing in gravity, and then recreate a scene from Rogue One that I bet no one remembers because there's exactly two things anyone remembers from that movie, and this isn't one of them. We crawl through a vent, but Isaac's fat head is too heavy, so we fall through it, where we go through another boss fight that's mostly just shooting at a thing until we scare it off. We save a bunch of children from their youth pastor and take elevator number 11. We do the ritual dance before getting attacked by someone who wants to give us special hugs. And then we meet up with Garth to hook up, but it turns out that she's married and is really into group play, which isn't really our thing, but luckily we're interrupted by the world's most inaccurate gunship that manages to kill literally everyone except the one single person they were actually aiming for. We spam E to not die and fall down a hole to a boss fight, which is mostly just aiming while we repeatedly get knocked over, until we reunite with the inaccurate gunship that once again fails to shoot a stationary target. And then we blow ourselves up and die, and that's the end of the game. But then there's more. We get a phone call from a Crayola employee who tells us to meet up so we can destroy the marker because it's Inktober, all you need is a pen. We take elevator number 12 and do the ritual dance where we unplug some oxygen generators because now we don't need the air to breathe, except yes we do, this was a mistake. So we turn the oxygen back on and take elevator number 13 to do the ritual dance. We take a shortcut through an Amazon packaging plant, but the employees aren't happy about it, so they annoy the shit out of me because I forgot about the slowdown button. Wow. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Game's like, hey, you're an idiot. <laughs> and now we meet our future ex-girlfriend who tells us to stay away from her. So of course, we immediately walk up to her because Isaac is a conservative and doesn't respect women's autonomy. We take elevator number 14. Do the ritual dance. Are you getting sick of this joke yet? Too bad. There's still like a dozen more elevators to go. And no, I'm not kidding. We walk into a school with a gun because this is America. That shit happens literally every week and stuff just starts breaking because of course it does. We shoot up the school, which is unfortunately topical because there's been 35 school shootings in the US in the past year alone, beating out the previous personal best of 34 school shootings in 2021. And with two months to spare. Go America. Our dead wife shows up again and Isaac continues to talk to her. Dude, come on. Don't talk to the hallucination. We take elevator number 15 and do the ritual dance and meet up with our future ex-girlfriend and the Crayola employee but get trapped by Gus Fring who sends some goons after us that I politely ask to let us through with absolutely no problems whatsoever. I don't have any health for this. Our future ex-girlfriend lets us know that we've got to go green and reset the solar panels, so we head off to elevator number 16 and do the ritual dance. We repair elevator number 17 and do the ritual dance on it for a while, briefly interrupted by other passengers trying desperately to get to their floor, but we're selfish and want all this extra space to ourselves, so we kick them off. And then I got blown up several times by the stupid pimple fuckheads. Why are these fucking things in the game? And then we meet... Just reset the counter. Killjoy. We find Howard's corpse, which somehow unburied itself from the bottom of the meth lab, and yes, that's a spoiler for Better Call Saul, and if this joke has you more rattled than the school shooting statistics, then maybe you should take a look at your life. We then use the corpse to make it through several security checkpoints, which is hilarious. We take lift number five and walk into a trip mine that I'm 100% positive the devs put in as a troll, and I guarantee everyone ran into this on their first playthrough. And of course, it resets you to the beginning of the room before the fight. Hooray. We crawl through a vent and do some puzzle solving that I did the slowest way possible because I totally missed that the solution to the puzzle was literally right on the floor next to me. We go insane in the mainframe and daisy daisy the security system and then take elevator number 18. The solar panels that I align with absolutely no problems whatsoever. We activate the solar beam and fling ourselves back to the station where we superhero landing and speaking from personal experience, that shit hurts. Personal experience from landing on my knees, not from flinging myself through space. I follow all safety precautions when I'm in space. After meeting back up with future ex-girlfriend and the Crayola employee, we struggle through the exact same room as before, because now it's extra fun with the inability to hear enemies around you due to the lack of air. We take elevator number 19. We do the ritual dance and float our way to the next area, where we meet up with future ex-girlfriend and the Crayola employee. And then take lift number 6, where we meet my favorite enemy in the game, so we witness the rare death animation.
before taking elevator number 20. I do the ritual dance and then take lift number seven to a puzzle that I get a little confused about because I think it bugged out. We take our first tram and talk to our dead wife some more before regrouping with future ex-girlfriend, whose hair gets really fucky, but we're interrupted by something and have to get out to go to another room full of Amazon employees and it goes about as well as you'd expect. Prolonged death animations. We And prolonged death animation. Prolonged death animation. Can I really not skip this? There's no way to skip it. I have a hand. Why did I have to be the explodey one? I was gonna restart the entire encounter. Oh, fuck. What the fuck is up with this room, dude? This isn't fun, and this isn't stressful, it's just straight up bad. What? Think getting close to those kills you instantly. Oh, that's a great thing to find out right at the end of this fucking encounter. Oh my god. I am never ever counting elevators again. We take lift number eight to a very explosive room that we explode and then take lift number nine back to the tram where Gus Fring uses solar beam on us. So we head to lift number 10 that we take to the ship from the first game so we can crash it into the moon. We take lift number 11 and find out that we've got to do some engineering, which is convenient because we're an engineer. So we take elevator number 22 and do the ritual dance and then fight a bunch of necromat because this game has a serious lack of restraint, which really kills the horror vibes. We take lift number 12 to elevator number 23 where we do the ritual dance and plug in the gravity gobbledygook machine and then have a flashback to the first game for a moment before having our decontamination interrupted by a contaminant. So we take elevator number 24, do the ritual dance, and then take a tram to a rave. But it turns out we're a little late and everyone's gone home except for the weirdos, so we really don't want to party with them. We take lift number 13 to lift number 14 and crash the after party before taking lift number 15 to the bridge so we can crash the ship into the moon. We take a Disney ride and then die, and that's the end of the game. But then there's more. The Crayola employee wants to dress up for Halloween, but goes a little overboard and decides to poke out our future ex-girlfriend's eye to really bring together her pirate costume. But that's okay, it's only a minor inconvenience. We plug in a battery and meet up with the Crayola employee who shows us his Shabrier grape lollipop. But future ex-girlfriend wants to play baseball and can't see too well, so she mistakes his head for the ball, and then calls her shot after she swung, so maybe she's just not got a great understanding of the sport to begin with. We do some floating puzzle solving and take lift number 16 to some moon whalers that we send on break because this whole area is one big OSHA violation. Crayola employee tries to feed us his lollipop, but we're on a no-sugar diet, so we feed it to him instead, but I think Isaac is a little mixed up on where you're supposed to put the food because we pushed it into his temple and not his mouth. We pick up the Crayola employee employee's head to take to our future ex-girlfriend as an apology for not teaching her how to play baseball, and we take lift number 17, but unfortunately the head despawned. We take lift number 18 right to lift number 19 and then continue to prevent people from getting on because we're selfish, so our dead wife chastises us for being rude by throwing us around and snapping our neck, but that's okay, we'll recover. How exactly did Isaac snap his own neck? We graduate therapy with our dead wife, so she takes a shower and we meet back up with our future ex-girlfriend to get a drill machine working, take lift number 20, then lift number 21, and then go through an overly long, majorly boring section where we sit on a machine while it digs. Seriously, this section is about four minutes long and the majority of it is sitting still. Our future ex-girlfriend crashes the drill machine because someone with one eye and no forklift certification shouldn't be trusted to operate heavy machinery. We get separated, but future ex-girlfriend finds a gunship, so we send her away so we can die on our own and have a heart-to-heart -heart with our dead wife who wants us to have passionate sex with her, which would be kind of awkward considering she's not real and doesn't have a physical body. That'd be some really weird fan art. We get a call from Gus Fring, who's upset that we're not dead yet, so we take elevator number 25 and do the ritual dance and then get a little lost because the door opening thing is hidden in a corner. We're stopped by a firing squad, but we jog away and they do literally nothing to stop us, so we crawl silently through a vent. Why? Thor, the god of thunder, is trying to enter my building. And then turn off the power to sick a horde of zombies on the firing squad, which is a really fucked up thing to do. Like, come on, Isaac. You could have just asked him nicely. I'm sure he would have acted reasonably. Dead wife asks us where we're going, but Isaac admits that he wasn't paying attention to the plot, which means he's not subscribed to Willie Asso because I've literally been summarizing the campaign this entire time. That's my whole deal. And then we have to go through another Amazon packaging plant, which is just as annoying as the last couple of times. We take lift number 23 and then have to fight another big enemy, which wastes almost all of my ammo. Hooray. And then take elevator number 26, where we do the ritual dance and get another phone call from Gus Fring, who survived all that bullshit from earlier. But that's okay, we'll deal with that in a sec. The marker starts playing dubstep, but it's very generic. 
Ah, dubstep. So we become a pirate to match our future ex-girlfriend and then run away from an invincible necroman with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Uh, fuck you! Uh -oh. Really? It's so annoying. Gotta go through the whole death animation again. You can hold F4 each time it happens. <laughs> yeah, make it even longer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can knock him over. <laughs> That's really goofy. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, okay. Okay. Works. <laughs> we take elevator number 27. Do the ritual dance, and I'm starting to question whether the dance actually does anything, because that stupid invincible necroman is still after us, and we get killed yet again. And then after a brief moment of respite, we've got to do more running away from an invincible necroman. We take lift number 24 to the marker where we get a new piercing from Gus Fring. So we return the favor and then watch him dramatically die after we don't execute him. Ah, uh, okay. Also, surprise, our dead wife is actually evil, which is a twist that absolutely no one saw coming. Who'd have thunk the evil ghost hallucination would turn out to be a bad guy? And what follows is a fucking awful boss fight that I didn't have enough ammo for, so it took me 15 minutes. The station starts exploding, so we sit on the ground as the credits roll and everything explodes and we die and that's the end of the series. There definitely isn't another game and I definitely haven't already covered it on this channel. Trust me, it's game over. Okay, fine, we survived and then they made a sequel that was so bad it killed the franchise. Happy? Game over. Special thanks to my patrons, whose continued support makes these videos possible. If you want to support the channel as well, patrons get a special avatar that goes at the end of the videos they help support, as well as early access to videos and full-res artwork from thumbnails.